most people think of a person with a disability. Very rarely do they think of me. But I was born with one thumb on right hand, three toes on one foot and four on the other. Unless you're barefoot with me in a hot yoga or modern dance class, you would have no idea that I live with what is often referred to as a non-severe disability. But guys, it's actually kind of cool. It's like I'm this undercover agent living in two worlds, and I get to see life from these two different sides. One, where I'm labeled normal, whatever that is. Another, where I'm labeled less than, or sometimes even different. It's really interesting, though, because this is my favorite part about being me, because it's the part that informs how I see and think about people with disabilities and how we live and how we dress. My life's work is disability fashion styling, how to take styling and content creation in order to change negative perceptions of people with disabilities. Usually the first question I get is, OK, disability fashion styling, uh, yeah, what exactly is that? It just describes how I dress someone with a disability. Usually the next follow-up question is, OK, well, what's the difference? This one I can show you better than I can tell you, so if you're able to stand on your own with no problems, can you do me a favor and just stand up, please? Oh, you're awesome, yay! <sighs> okay, thank you, you may be seated. <laughs> All right, so what's the first thing you did when you stood up? Did you shift your pants? Maybe did you shift your shirt or your jacket? Did you do anything like that? Well, for someone who sits all the time and maybe uses a wheelchair for mobility, these are things that they have to deal with. So when I'm disability fashion styling, when I'm working with someone who's a wheelchair user, these are things I keep in mind. I make sure that the back of the pants are higher than the front because why? You want to have modesty when you're sitting and transporting, like from the car or the couch. Someone who has a seated body type and is using that wheelchair, you may not know this, but people are literally dying to be beautiful because those little rivets and those thick seams and back pockets can cause deadly body sores. So those have got to go. In addition to that, the pockets that are really cool that you have on your hips that work really well when you're standing, not so much when you're sitting, so we have to make sure that those are lower for even more access. Now, when you sat down, did your pants rise? Okay, so then the pants have to be longer because you got to make sure that you have the length that you need when sitting. Now, dressing someone with a seated body type is only one of many ways to dress with disabilities. Let's just say someone has autism syndrome, and they may have sensory sensitivity to all different types of fabrics, and those little tags that they put to tell us how to care for our garments, that can really be disturbing to someone with autism syndrome. So you want to make sure that you understand these things. Buttoning a button for you may be nothing, but for someone that has dexterity challenges and have arthritic flare-ups, that is incredibly difficult. And let's just take a little woman. A little woman may just want to wear stilettos to work. Nothing fancy, just regular stilettos. But she's not able to, because not many brands make those shoes in her sizes. Just a few examples for you. Now, if you're wondering how did I start on this journey in addition to being born so beautifully, I mean, you know, my feet and hands. I can tell you how. 24 years ago, I was in a pageant competition to earn money for school, and my pageant director said, why do you never button your left cuff? Well, I don't know, I hadn't thought about that. I don't think about those things. And then it dawned on me, duh, I don't have a right thumb, so I never button my left cuff because it takes too long. You know those little buttons on your cuff that you have to contend with? And guys, that opened my eyes to this whole new world. It literally changed my life. And it made me see that clothing for people with disabilities just didn't exist on a large scale. What does that mean? It means that there was so much apathy in the early 90s surrounding this issue, and there were so few clothing choices. I became a bit obsessed about it. Anyone who knows me can tell you that I literally could not stop talking about it. So I couldn't just talk about it. I had to be about it. So fast forward a few years later, and what happens? I start contacting marketers of large brands, and I start saying to them, hey, have you ever thought about taking some of your current collection and targeting people with disabilities? Or maybe, hey, have you thought about having a pre-sold collaborative effort for people with disabilities with your brand? We had great conversations. It lasted for about a year, but nothing came of it. And that's when I had my aha moment. 
you can't market to people you don't see. And you just can't see people that you don't value. And I don't mean value as human beings. I mean value as potential fashion customers. You know, in the States, we have the Americans with Disabilities Act. Yay! And it makes it mandatory for people who have wheelchairs to be able to actually have access to stores and have wheelchair accessible dressing rooms. Yay! But there's no clothing on the floor for anyone with a seated body type. As a matter of fact, in the world, there are fewer than five stores, not just in the States, but in the world with actually clothing on the floor for people with seated body types. And I'm literally not making that up. You'll be proud to know that one of those stores are right here in Canada, though. Izzy Collection does a great job. Now, in complete contrast, and I have to preface this by saying that I'm a pet lover, but we have more clothing in stores for these adorable fellows right here than we literally have for people with disabilities. I, I wish I was making that up. This is what started this for me, the disability fashion styling system. Although I love dogs and I think they look adorable in clothes, I just needed to know that I could give a tool and provide a tool where people with disabilities would have the ability to dress with dignity, style, and self-reliance. The disability fashion styling system has three guiding principles that for me act as a litmus test. And what do I mean by that? It means that the clothing has to be accessible, smart, and fashionable, accessible, easy to put on and take off on your own, or even with a dresser, smart, not causing any harm to the body, medically safe, and fashionable, loved by the wearer, something that fits the wearer's lifestyle and their body type. For instance, today, right now, what I'm wearing is accessible for me. It's easy to put on. There's one short zipper, but it's not a problem for me. And the thing that's really important for me with my feet is that even my pumps passed the test today. Woo All pumps are not created equal, by the way. I also use the disability fashion styling system in many ways. I'm a professor at the Art Institute of California where I teach fashion marketing. I also use it when dressing actors with disabilities. And I use it when managing Curatable. Curatable is a disability fashion lifestyle hub that features aspirational figures, I like to say. People with disabilities living their lives actors, tastemakers, influencers. And for me, it's important to have these figures represented because people need to know that people with disabilities can live amazing full lives. I use Curatable to also partner to create publications and lookbooks like this that have been featured in People Magazine, Esmoda, and many other areas. I also use the disability fashion styling system to manage and find the best in disability fashion styling brands. And what I mean by that, brands that are universal, that anyone could wear, or that someone can wear that has a disability. And I can say right now, guys, it's a super exciting time. We are literally everywhere. We are on Broadway. People with disabilities, they're in the movies, we're in media, everywhere. So different brands are starting to pop up all over the place. It's amazing, but it's still not enough. It's still not enough to meet this growing need. So, what do we need to do? We need to get past the barriers. And what I've noticed is over the last 24 years, there have been a number of barriers that cause us not to do this. So, barrier number one, or myth number one as I like to say, people with disabilities, yeah, people with disabilities are all the same. No, we're not. Kathy Snow is a disability advocate and a mom of a child with a disability, and she always says, People with disabilities are people first. And I'd like to add to that, and like all people, have individual needs. Myth number two, oh, designing is just too difficult. We can't design for, are you, are you kidding me? Look, we've had niche markets for how many decades? And although I don't like the way we describe them, we have maternity, we have plus size, petite, busty, all of this. And guys, if we can dress him, I am convinced that we can dress people with disabilities. People with disabilities can't afford it is myth number three. We don't want to go shopping. We have too many other things to focus on. Really? No one gave me that memo. Um, but the World Health Organization says that people with disabilities, 1.3 billion people, their family and friends, 
2.1 billion people. Senior citizens, 650 million people with an aggregate disposable, just disposable income of $8 trillion. Meeting the fashion needs of people with disabilities is not something that we need to do because it's charitable or because it meets the SROI. It's smart business, period. It's just smart business. I saw something the other day in Business of Fashion that said, hey, hashtag, menswear is dead. What's next? I got a few suggestions for them. <laughs> Guys, 24 years ago, one question changed my life, opened my eyes to this issue. And so I'd like to leave you with a question today. If you are a person with a disability, if you were a parent or loved one of a child with a disability, what would you want? And hear me, this is not about guilt or feeling bad. Come on, had my coach not brought my cuff to mind, I wouldn't be standing right here 24 years later having this conversation with you. Making sure that this happens for people is all about choice. Every day you go to your closets, you get to choose. You get to choose what you wear, when you wear, why you wear it, and how you wear it. So let's make sure that people with disabilities have the same choices. I'm encouraged by the fashion industry, but in the meantime, until they get it all right, the disability fashion styling system acts as a bridge, a bridge that makes it possible for people to be empowered. I'm just leaving you with this. What choice would you want? Oh, you know something? Wait a minute, I forgot. I forgot one thing. I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry, I forgot. Um, we got a bit of a surprise for you. So let me tell you what makes this fashion show different from many other shows, because as you've seen on the runways and New York Fashion Week and all over the world, you've seen people with disabilities on the runway. But what makes this runway special is that everyone on this stage has the ability to put on what they have on simply, either on their own or with a dresser. And that's what makes this difference. Let me tell you about this from Coolway Sports. Coolway Sports is a Canadian brand. You'd be really proud of that. And this jacket is amazing. Not only can this jacket unzip here to be a short jacket, but this is perfect for all weather wear when it's raining or anything like that. Can you do me a favor, Alex? And there is no inset sleeve to contend with here. We've got a zipper all the way down that makes dressing amazing. Do you like it, Alex? I know. Can I sneak in front of you? So I'm going to introduce you to Hannah now. Hannah loves long skirts. Hannah has braces on her legs, but she wants people to pay attention to her beautiful face. So we put her in a great skirt that is elastic waist, even the faux belt. Can I show the belt? This is still elastic. There are no buttons or fasteners to contend with. And this shirt is also fastener free. You look beautiful, Hannah. And her sister, woohoo! <laughs> Now, right now, this is a rugby player, Evan, 
And Evan is also our designer. He has a line of his own. But we put him in a great top from ESPY, and he's actually wearing Izzy Collection jeans, or chinos, rather. Remember I told you about higher in the back, lower in the front? Can we show them where the pocket is for you? The pocket sits right here, so it's not so high, and it has a zipper to keep things from falling out of the pocket. It's amazing. You look great. And also, this is Michelle. Michelle has one prosthetic leg, which can make the, the hip sit higher. So by finding a skirt that is fitted in the waist and has an A-line, it totally balances her body out. And so visually, it gives her the appearance of having the balance and not having one hip higher than the other. And Nadine. She told me right away, she was like, oh my gosh, I love this dress. Because most people don't know that when you dress with a prosthetic, it also overheats your body a bit. So this dress is lightweight. There's no fastener, it's kind of a jersey knit light fabric. And she was able to get in it by herself with no issues. And the color looks stunning on her. Let's give them all a hand. You've been wonderful, thank you.